So I'm Alistair Leggett and I'm the Catchment and Biodiversity Manager for Affinity Water. Alistair, thanks for talking to the Affinity Water podcast series today. Where are we? Well, we are on the outskirts of Stevenage in Hertfordshire in a little village called Aston and we are just walking alongside the River Bean. I'm just standing still here because I'm listening to the birds chirping in their hedgerows. I wish I was Dave and Attenborough with some time-lapse cameras, perhaps. Yes. You know, but there, there's also wildlife, isn't there? The, the whole spectra from, from the birds that are flying to the beavers that are being reintroduced to, to the fish and the insects. Well, absolutely. I mean, beavers are a really good example. I mean, we've been involved in a project to re-establish beavers over on the Hertfordshire Essex border. And the natural process, particularly with beavers, to, to manage flood risk, to control the flow, to create ponded areas, which encourage you know, some of the macroinvertebrates that then feed the larger species and, and really you know, provide the foundation of that food chain. In a lot of areas have completely disappeared and the, and the ecology has just collapsed as a consequence consequence of that and some of these innovative ideas including re-establishing and and beavers into the area have been really interesting ideas not necessarily applicable everywhere but you have to look at each catchment in isolation understand the issues and the challenges and what the potential solutions could be right from land management through to you know how you protect and preserve some of the vital species that we have that depend on chalk streams and that's why affinity water works hand in hand with the heart wildlife trust and there indeed you could find lists of of what you can find in terms of flora, fauna, trees, hedgerows and wildlife by this river bean. Absolutely, yeah. We have a strategic partnership with the Hearts and Middlesex Wildlife Trust and they they support us in developing management plans and and the conservation of of, of the assets that we own, particularly some of the lakes and further down on on the River Colne, not too far from here. But yeah, interesting. I mean, the Hearts and Middlesex Wildlife Trust fairly recently produced a state of the nature report for this area and it really highlighted some of the significant decline in particularly some of the bird species but some of the wider population and it really emphasizes the challenge and and the wildlife trust have a fantastic kind of ambition to have a 30 percent increase in nature recovery across this area and i do believe affinity water other businesses other major landowners land managers all have a role to play in supporting and helping nature to recover in this area and alongside that will provide great to sustainability for, for water supply as well so these things are intrinsically linked now we're seeing a, a walker with her dog coming through the rain i wonder if she walks here every day hello hi we're recording a podcast for affinity water are you a, a regular walker yeah. along the river bean yeah. and what do you think of this landscape and the walk well i love it yeah i it's, love it down here do you come out every day yes yeah yeah, every day. Either along here or sometimes I take slightly different routes, but yes, every day. Well, what's your dog's name? That's Digby. Oh, Digby. Oh, Digby. Well, we'll let you go on your walk, but thank you very much no, for talking to us. It's fine. See you. <gasps> Bye. Bye. Well, this is what we want. This is England, meandering chalk streams. But there we go. Looks like a takeaway carton in the river. Oh, uh, yes. And, 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 you know, this is something that personally... <sighs> just depresses me you know there are very very simple things that we can all do as individuals you know we as as the lady just we would just walk past was saying she absolutely loves this area she comes out here every day and we all love to connect to our local environment you know particularly during the the last couple of years of the pandemic having access to open space has been absolutely critical but when you see this kind of rubbish and, and waste and people not really understanding that this can have a significant impact to to the environment it builds up you know it's it's depressing we all have our own role to play you know i mean i i was always told i did a lot of traveling when i was younger and 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 the mantra was always leave only footprints take only memories and i think that should apply to to everything we do when we connect with the environment and and it does seem to be lost a little bit but yes you know there are big 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 challenges you know the the sewer overflows and 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 the impacts there is something that as as a country as an industry we are going to really have to look at and invest significantly in land management pollution coming from agriculture is another big challenge and you know my team in the catchment management team do a lot of work around how we 
identify solutions to, to the challenges of, of, of pollution, particularly what's known as diffuse pollution, which is not necessarily pollution from a particular source, but pollution that could be mobilised off the land following heavy rainfall. Or if you can manage wastes in such a way that you're not losing them from a point of where they could be useful, or where they can be controlled and managed and discharged in a way that has a minimal environmental impact. You know, these are the, everybody who produces a waste needs to consider this and needs to consider how they manage their own waste and even our domestic waste, how much we throw away. Phew, Alistair, we've now walked down by the river bean or chalk stream we're now on a little bridge of Ford with some agricultural machinery working in the background. The water resources plan in the southeast, why is it important? Well, yeah, so Water Resources Southeast is an organisation that's been set up of the six water companies that supply drinking water in the southeast of England. And it's vitally important because it's, it's taking a collective approach, a strategic regional approach to managing water resources across the entire southeast of England. So rather than just individual water companies looking at the issues in their area, we can collectively look at the challenges across the whole region from climate change to population growth and, and develop a plan that, that really ensures security of supply, sustainable supply of water for the next 30 years and beyond but also takes into account some of those challenges, some of those areas, those catchments which are impacted the most environmentally by water abstraction and supply and it looks strategically around some of the options for maybe moving water in elsewhere creating transfers between water companies but also looking at catchment based solutions specific to those catchments to ensure those catchments are more resilient the, the chalk streams function better and that we can continue to supply water but it also takes into account that we've currently got 19 million people living in the south east of England. Now, I think something in the region of about 28 million tourists visiting annually, all demanding water while they're here. On, on a good day, the, the south east of England can supply over 6 billion litres of water. Now that's a huge amount of water supplying a huge population and if you think that we're expecting an extra 4 million people in the area over the next 30 years and, and predicting the need for an extra 1 billion litres of water on, on top of the six billion litres already supply something's got to give the environment will be impacted on that so the work of water resources in the southeast to develop a strategic regional plan for water resources that then forms the blueprint for the individual water companies to develop their individual water resource management plans that collective approach that just strategic approach will hopefully start to you know identify the options and solutions that will allow us to continue to supply water sustainably in the future and also as i say we're standing on this ford and we're looking out over the river bean at aston with fields either side and a nice meandering slow flow just as a chalk stream should be but this the river bean goes on to the river lee which goes on to the river thames another water company so you can't really say this is ours and this is theirs it's it's one plan for water in the southeast now Absolutely. And, it, and it's, it's one plan that takes into account the challenges of the River Bean catchment, the River Lee catchment, the issues impacting the River Thames and the Thames estuary. It looks at all of this in the round. And as you say, you know, this isn't water doesn't respect water company operational boundaries. Pollution doesn't respect water company operational boundaries. The need to supply water, the, the growing population. All of these things are happening everywhere. So, yeah, we have to collectively meet that challenge. And, and you know, I, I, I would say six heads are definitely better than one. And just finally, talking about the Water Resources Southeast plan, we take water, most of our water, 50, 60 percent, comes from groundwater sources, such as chalk streams. And we know they're, they're controversy over, over abstraction. But are there other alternatives for water do we need to take so much from the natural environment 
Absolutely not. And, you know, one of the key elements of, of all of the both the strategic regional plans and the water company water resource management plans will be about how we manage that demand for water going into the future. You know, we are being expected under the Environment Agency's environmental destination process. We are going to have to reduce abstraction in certain areas where we are having an impact on the environment, but yet we need to supply more people with more water. So actually managing demand for water, the amount each individual person uses for water, the amount of water that's used in, in industry, manufacturing, processing, the, the, the goods that are installed into new housing developments, you know, do, making those more water efficient. These All of these things will collectively have a benefit if we can reduce the amount each person is, is using over the next 30 years to correspond with you know some of the the other infrastructure needs you know transferring water paying farmers to to farm the land better for nature all of these things that are going on at the moment of course with climate change it's really relevant now let's just go closer to that trickling river again the river bean let's end this podcast Alistair by saying look just beyond the food waste carton in the river bean is clearly a hole in the bank where somebody is making their home it's quite a big hole um, what do you think it is oh uh, i mean i'd love to think it was an otter or a water vole i'm not an expert in this area but absolutely you know we have species that were common a few hundred years ago that, that are on the edge of extinction i mean water voles one that i feel quite passionately about used to be commonplace across all of these chalk streams and now you know you're you'll you'll be lucky to see one in your lifetime now i mean i've been lucky enough to see one and you know i cherish that memory but if we can create ecosystems and habitats they will return if we give them a home they will come this is this is a really key thing that affinity water feel very strongly about about helping nature to recover helping chalk streams to function properly and and you know ultimately it makes good business sense for us because we need to be able to supply sustainable water supply for for generations to come and we have to do that without having this negative impact on the environment. And just finally, we do need our customers to climb on board this bandwagon, leave only footprints, take home memories, save water, save our streams. Absolutely, yeah. Everyone's got a role to play. I'm, I've got a toddler now. I'm, I'm a relatively new father. I've seen my landfill waste increase quite a bit since I've had a child. I've seen our water usage go up, our energy consumption go up, and I'm thinking hard every day about how I can reduce that, how I can build my own family, create my own legacy without creating a negative legacy for the environment. Well, Alistair, thank you very much indeed for sparing your time for this January 2022 Affinity Water podcast. You know, I will uh, leave any footprints take home memories and particularly not just the classic slow flowing chalk stream the river bean here at Aston but also look 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 at just those those holes in the river bank I think we are in luck I think we've spotted those water vowels you love so much there is definitely life here and it makes me want to stay a little bit longer although if we if we stay out too much longer we are going to be drown rats ourselves so you don't think the water voles will appear just for us i would say they're probably not appearing because of us so. right okay well thank you very much indeed for talking to us thank you An absolute pleasure thank you